Tonight our special guest is one of New Zealand's most famous imports, Roy Phillips from The Peddlers. Many of our Baby Boomer viewers will remember well the impact and enjoyment of their music during the late 60s and 70s. How do I know? I was there loving it like everyone else. Roy Phillips from The Peddlers. Greetings. What an honour. What an honour. I bow my head. Uh, bow thee not, I tell you. Stout yeoman. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roy. All the way from Christchurch. I know you've been doing a New Zealand tour, but at the end of that tour, you've dropped into the studios of The Beat Goes On, and we are very appreciative. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, our Baby Boomer viewers, mm -hmm. we, it's a Baby Boomer chat show, Roy. Uh, do they know the peddlers? Wow. Do they know the peddlers? <laughs> the door on the world and its troubles we don't need nobody else when there's you and me we've got all that we need i don't want to hear the shallow words the world is saying i don't want to play the complicated games they're playing so i stay the charging Tell the world we're not in. I'm going to give you a chance to say something now, Ralph. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> Just give me the nod. Uh, yes, we, we started the Paddlers off in the 1964. Wow. Yeah. And, um, that's in England, of course. That's in England. But yeah. um, before that, I was doing session work for a guy called Joe Meek. That's right. And Joe Meek was the crazy man of pop in those days. And his biggest hit, of course, I'll tell our viewers, was... To, uh, Telstar. Telstar by Telstar. the Tornadoes. That's, That's right. got Joe on the on the road, didn't it? That's right, yeah. yes. And we went through um, quite a few years with Joe, getting sessions off of him and um, um, watching Madness personified. <laughs> and it certainly was. Yeah, yeah. And the last time I ever saw him was... I was carting a because they played guitar in those days. Yes, I noticed that because uh, I always saw you as a Hammond organ man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, this you came after as, that. Started yeah. off as a guitarist. Yes. Well, Manfred Mann and I got together and um, we decided that uh, uh, Hammond organs were going to be the thing. And, yeah, uh, they were too, weren't uh, they? they? They took off. Um, but anyway, the well, last time well, I went to see um, yeah. uh, Joe, I, was, yeah. I thought I had a session. He there. did commit suicide, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and I arrived at the studio in um, 284 Holloway Road, North London, and it was surrounded by police. I'd never seen so many police, and um, they said, where are you going? And I said, I've got a session upstairs uh, at RGM Sound, which was Joe Meeks. And... Uh, uh, the policeman said, oh, no, you haven't. No, no, no. And uh, he says, look up the stairs. And I looked up the stairs leading into his show studios, uh, or studio, which was his bedroom. Yeah. You know? And um, Joe's brains were made a great design on the wall. And, uh, really? It was a very sad time. It was a very sad time. And there was something about the landlady as well. Mm, that's right, Mrs. Yeah. Shenton. Yeah. Mrs. Shenton owned a leather shop underneath. And she was basically his mother. She used to bring him a cup of tea in the morning and make sure he ate his uh, food. And um, uh, unbeknownst to her, Joe had uh, many shotguns in his um, uh, uh, studio up there, which he used to, I, I believe he used to play pigeon and mm. things like that. And Mrs. Shenton walked up the stairs and um, he'd been taking too many pills. Too many pills. And, and he shot her. Or he something. shot her, and, and then, then turned the gun on then himself. Turned the gun on himself. Wow. Yeah. And uh, we never did get that, that session. <laughs> <laughs> I know we can joke about it now, yeah. but um, some pretty awful things yeah. went on around that that time. England at that time, 1964. You're describing mm. what a fantastic period. The Beatles had the just best. broke America, hadn't mm. they? Mm. And mm. our mm. generation, mm. the baby boomers, we yes. were taking off like a rocket, weren't That's we? That's right. That's yeah. right. Everything was exciting. Everything. That's right. I mean, you could. There, there were bands like, uh, well, of course, The Who, uh, Status Quo, and all that, yeah. um, playing in places like the Marquee Club and uh, what have you. It was just a wonderful, wonderful mm. time, an inventive time with popular music, yeah. then, in which the Brits were 
Yeah. Setting the world alight, really. I mean, we've had American for donkey's years, but yeah. uh, the Brits, there was something about them. Then my uh, uh, bass player, as, uh, as I had then, was, he was one of Joe Meek's uh, session bass players, uh, came to Manchester with me and um, uh, we found a drummer called Trevor Morais. Yes, hey, and, Trevor. Um, and, and dear Trevor, um, uh, is, uh, he was just going to join the Beatles. Uh, a ring, uh, uh, Bestie had left. Uh, the, That's the, right, the, Pete the, Best. Yeah, Pete had left. And uh, so Trevor was going to did take he, did over. Did he audition, did he? Or? And uh, he came along to one of our things because we were looking for a drummer. Yeah. And um, he said to weigh it up whether he wanted to, to have a bit of swing element in, in his playing or go with the Beatles where there was absolutely no swing at all. You yeah. know? It was quite the opposite. And so he chose us. And uh, of course, we <laughs> all got together through there. <laughs> And um, now, was that a good decision on his part yes. or a bad decision? Oh, it was a wonderful decision. But Tre <laughs> Trevor Morais was uh, part mad and part genius. He was absolutely. He was a showman wonderful. drummer, wasn't he? Fabulous showman drummer. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I don't know whether he was the greatest drummer in the world, no, but no, he was no. a showman. That's right. If, I mean, if if we had to make up the the uh, half bars. Yeah. that Trevor left out, uh, we'd be still playing today, you know. <laughs> One day, um, you had a song, and I know you're sick of talking about it, but uh, the song called Girly. Mm -hmm. and I'm the, not sick of talking uh, about it. You're not sick of talking about no, it? No, certainly not. It was, it was wonderful for yeah, me. Yeah, it was. Um, but I want to ask you, uh, what I, I always love those background information. Uh, did you write that song? Yes. Uh, you're right. Yes. When you wrote it, did you think, wow, this is going to be a hit, or tell us no, a story? No, 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 no. Uh, I wrote it as a poem. I used to sort of write poems. Well, I suppose you'd call them yeah. ditties. Ditties, yeah. Uh, ditties and uh, scribblings. And uh, I, I happened to mention it to a, a few people that, uh, at a club we were working called the Pigwig yeah. Club. Um, uh, that I think this could go to uh, a little bit of a, a different height, you know. Yeah and make it last about 13 minutes, the whole thing on, on record. So, okay, we did. So I borrowed a little bit of uh, classical theme uh, for the Hammond organ, and uh, the rest came by using a wow-wow pedal that I just had fitted onto the Hammond. You're the hello and a welcome, and the answer to a prayer. You're a passage of Beethoven child. Like a precious stone, you're rare. You're the little touch of sadness, but you're overwhelming joy. You're that never ending mystery in the mind of every boy. You're the most expensive perfume with the scent of morning air. You're that wonder of God's creation, child. I'd love the world to share, and I still love you, girly. I love you, girly. Wonderful voice. Well, that's that. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I tell you what. Before we started the band in Manchester, while we were starting the band, we were looking for a singer. Yes. And uh, and and I couldn't find a, a singer at all. We advertised in the Manchester Evening Gazette. Yeah. Still got nothing. But um, anyway, I ended up doing because we had a gig yeah, coming up. Yeah. So that was about it. Wow. So now you re you recorded it. Did any of the technicians, did any of the managers, did anybody say, this is a hit? Yes. Did they say that? Yes, they did. Yes. They did, as soon yes. as they heard it. Well, a guy called Mike Clayton, who was the head of um, uh, IBC Studios in Portland Place in London, uh, said, I think we've got something here. Yeah. You know? And th there were several mistakes on there, gl glaring, because I have to change over onto grand piano for a solo. Nobody else then. would notice except you. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I think we all noticed them. And I, I, when I listen to them today, I still go, ooh, ouch. <laughs> and um, uh, that was it. And they said, no, 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 we're not changing. We're not changing a thing. Next thing I know, it was number one in Italy, number one in France. And, yeah. uh, and 
Now, this is the other fascinating story about the peddlers. For some unknown reason, well, we've never known. New Zealand took to the peddlers. They did. Mm. They just loved you. Yeah. yeah. Do you know why? Why, mm. why? why did New Zealanders love the peddlers so Do much? Do you know, I don't know. I, yeah. The first tour we ever did for Mr. Warren, um, uh, Phil Warren, yeah. uh, was six weeks, and it was... Dates from hell. We played every small town mm. in the North and South Island. And you packed them out, didn't you? It was wonderful. Yes, exactly. And it just reminded me of our home London clubs yeah. at that time, you know. Let me, uh, let me uh, tell you my going to see the peddlers, absolutely jam-packed, and the show, the, the people went mad about the peddlers, and, uh, oh, was... and I was there, and wow, just knocked out. So... Mm. Uh, it was, a, it, was, it was like winning the jackpot. Yes, you know, it was. Really. Now, yeah. as a result of that, your feelings towards New Zealand? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You've ended up living your life in New yep. Zealand, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. I came 1981. I said goodbye, cruel world in <laughs> London. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to live in a little bit of paradise. And yeah. um, Waitangi beckoned. And, uh, yeah. I just saw New Zealand as, as, as really an honest and open place. Mm. You know, at the people, there, there was absolute no, no BS at all about yeah. it. Uh, they told you straight to your face. Now, I come from a, a, a place in England right on the south coast called Dorset, and they do exactly the same thing. Yeah. A spade is a spade. A spade yeah. And let's not waste, waste time Tired, yeah. by... Total BS. Yeah. Can't stand it, never could, never will. <laughs> and the New Zealanders uh, were like that for me. And so I'm home. Uh, now, when are you going to live in Auckland? Uh, why, are you, why are you ignoring Auckland? Uh, uh, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not ignoring. <laughs> I'm not did, coming to live with us. No, I, no I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't want to. You don't I, I, to. I, I, I live in Christchurch uh, with my wonderful lady. Yeah. And um, that is the home. We may move out of there from time yeah. to time. Um, we're not great big city people anymore. Well, I'm not. Mm. I like the quiet life. A very quiet life, in fact. Yeah. And as uh, long as I've got my studio yeah. at home uh, that I can uh, create, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, very happy. So much to ask, but uh, a little bit of philosophy now. What's the journey been all about? What, if you had to sum it up, what's, uh, what has Roy Phillips mm. learned in this time around, this, on this particular reincarnation? What, oh, well, I've, what I've, lessons were you to learn and what have you learned? Oh, lessons, my God. How, how long do you say you've got on this? Uh, I, thought I'd get the, I thought I'd get the easy ones at first. <laughs> uh, I, I, I like music. Mm. I love music. I play with music. I have fun with music. And I think my life has just been fun. You, yeah. Just great fun, and it's a privilege. That's yeah. what it is, a Could pure you? privilege. So when you meet your maker, you'll be able to stand there and say, wow, that was a great time. I, oh. I, had, a, I had a beauty. long as he doesn't put me sitting next to a drummer, <laughs> I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about mum and dad. In fact, I read on your website that, um, in fact, were you adopted? Yes. You were adopted. Yes. Did you ever... Uh, meet your mum and dad, real biological? No, 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 I didn't want to. Never My father them. gave me the opportunity, Yeah. but uh, no, I never wanted to. Not why? I had um, wonderful, wonderful things. So you're, the two parents that did adopt you, he was a gold leaf? Uh, uh, he was a, 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 an interior craftsman. painter and yeah, decorator. Exactly. And he used to specialise in doing these stately homes. And his name was Frankie. Was Frankie, it? yeah. Frankie, and what was Frankie. your mum's name? Uh, my mum's name was, oh, there was many. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mum's name, she was called Dolly by all her friends, and so her name Frankie was Margaret. Dolly. Yeah. Frankie and Dolly, Frankie and Dolly. Now, I just want to say, you, you love them to pieces. Oh, Lordy. My, my father is, um, he's the only hero I've had in the world. I've, I've, I've played with so many wonderful people. Mm. I've, 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 for years I worked with Sinatra. And, uh, yeah. Okay, what was it about Frankie, your dad, that you loved most? What was, what was it about? He was an honest, good, mm. I would say Christian. He was a Christian. He wasn't um, uh, like a God-fearing or anything like that, but he was a Christian man. 
And he said to you, Roy, you can meet your biological father and mother, but... No, he, he didn't say that. He just said you can have the opportunity to know who your mother was. My father, I think, was some... Um, dirty little American that um, no. uh, <laughs> that had joined the war years uh, <laughs> thought he'd have a bit of fun with a, a local girl. Oh, <laughs> one of those, eh? <laughs> but uh, uh, no, dear old dad. He did. He did say. He says, ah, you know, if you want to know some. And so, you but I'd had no no need. To you know. could have met your mum, and you said no. No, no, I don't want. I wasn't remotely interested. Mm. And she didn't seek you out. No, no. Roy, it's been wonderful. Uh, I can't believe it. All those years ago, 1969, me paying my hard or oh, could I have it back now? Thanks. Yeah, oh, really. <laughs> <laughs> paying my hard-earned money to go and see Roy and the Peddlers, Roy Phillips and the Peddlers, mm -hmm. and what a wonderful concert it was. And here I am, uh, 2017, having a chat with you. It's wonderful, that, isn't that's it? That's wonderful, yeah, is it? Yeah. The world is just... That's, that's the are. last time I saw you. Roy... We're going to see you on the program again. You're going to come I to Auckland. Hope You're going you... to leave Christchurch and come up here and be on The Beat Goes On more regularly. Oh, I would. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man.